how often do you need to be recarbing up or adding carbs back in your diet when you're on a low carb diet or a ketogenic diet? This question comes up all the time and I wanna go into some exquisite detail as to how it works in your body. But first and foremost, make sure you turn on those notifications for these videos so that you can see whenever I post one or whenever I go live, which is even cooler. Also, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you can get these three videos per week plus the live broadcast. All right, science time. When it comes down to ketosis, a lot of people are always wondering, should I have cheat meals or refeed meals or should I restore what's called muscle glycogen, which is the carbohydrates that are stored in our muscles, or should you just float on through ketosis because you don't need them? Well, let me first say, we have to break this down into two different categories. Uh, when we're looking at ketosis, we've got full-blown therapeutic style of ketosis, okay, where you're like just guzzling fats all the time, right? You're just like chugging them, basically going like 90% fats, 8% protein, and 2% carbs. That's what's called a therapeutic ketosis, and that is not necessarily what most people are doing, especially if you're watching this channel, you're probably not doing a therapeutic ketogenic diet, which truly is very beneficial. But in that particular case, you're never gonna need to carb refeed, simply put. But there's another style of ketogenic dieting, which is also known as baseline keto, I like to call it. Or basically when you're looking at keto as getting fat adapted and then every once in a while having carbs into the equation. So how this works is when your body is utilizing ketones as a source of fuel, you're not really utilizing carbs anymore. So that means that your muscle glycogen actually stays fuller. You have more carbs stored in your muscles and your body becomes more efficient at utilizing it. Here's what's crazy. The small amount of carbohydrates that you are getting from a ketogenic diet, like the 5% of your diet that is carbs, plus the protein that gets converted into carbs, ends up being enough to keep your muscle glycogen levels full. That means that they're high enough naturally in ketosis to be able to work out just fine. So people say, I feel weaker when I'm in ketosis and I feel better when I have carbs. That is somewhat true. But if you understand that glycogen actually stays higher in ketosis for a longer period of time, then you might be able to strategize when you have a refeed meal. So let me put it like this. Our bodies become very, very efficient at using carbs when you're in ketosis, which sounds crazy. When I first heard that and started studying this, I thought it was nuts. I was like, wait a minute. I thought that my body was getting more efficient at using fats. I thought that it had nothing to do with carbs. Totally not the case. You see, the body becomes so used to using fats as a source of fuel that it tries preserving what little carbs you do have in your body. What this simply means, no matter what, whether you are in full-blown ketosis or not, your body will always need some glucose. Okay, let me say that again so it makes perfect sense. Your body, no matter what, guys, will always need some glucose. Your brain always requires 15 to 18% glucose. Your liver is gonna really create some no matter what. It's gonna create it from little bits of carbs that you get, or it's gonna create it from proteins. Now, what changes in ketosis is how far those carbohydrates go. And what I mean by that is your body is gonna do its best to keep the carbohydrates that are stored in your muscles and let them last as long as possible. Now I'm gonna back this up with some science in just a minute, so make sure you stick with me through this entire video because I have to get through some basic stuff before I can give you the research so it all makes sense. What we have to remember is we have two tanks of glycogen in our body. We have carbs that are stored in our muscles, okay? Those are the ones that we use when we work out, things like that. Then we have carbs that are stored in the liver. It's the liver glycogen that fuels the brain. When the liver glycogen is emptied, that's when we produce ketones, not when we drain the muscle glycogen too. There's this common myth out there that says we need to absolutely make sure we drain through our muscle glycogen and drain through our liver glycogen to ever be in ketosis. False. It's all about draining the liver glycogen. In fact, in ketosis, you wanna keep your muscle glycogen pretty high because that's what's gonna allow you to still function and work out because your body's gonna preserve it. It's gonna keep the muscles full. So I hope that that makes sense, okay? When it comes down to being in ketosis, we don't have to burn through our muscle glycogen. Okay, now let me reference a study. This particular study took a look at ultra marathon runners that were accustomed to running 100 mile races. And you may be thinking like, this is a pretty darn extreme example. Like, why are we going this route? Well, this extreme example allows it to make perfect sense. So in this study, these ultra marathon runners were broken down into two groups, one group, they gave them a low carb diet, basically put them in ketosis. Another group, they fed them a lot of carbs. They fed them a lot of fruit. They gave them the traditional high carb diet. Then what they did is they had them run for three hours, three hours straight. And in this three hour run, they basically measured some things out of their saliva. They did some cross-sectional muscle fiber analysis, and they also measured their blood levels. What they were finding was pretty darn intriguing. 
both groups had the same amount of glycogen left in their muscles at the end of the three hour run. So let me break it down with some math for you really quick. If one group of runners that had the high carb diet started with 400 total grams of carbs stored throughout their entire body, and the other group only had maybe 75 grams stored because they were on a low carb diet, the fact that they both ended with 50 grams of carbohydrates stored proves that the low carb diet group didn't use much glycogen. What does that tell us? It tells us that not only the body is more adapted to fats, the body has become ruthlessly efficient at utilizing glycogen the way that it should, which therefore proves that we don't need to be draining the glycogen tank to be in ketosis. So the long-winded explanation of what I'm trying to say here is if you have a refeed meal once every couple of weeks in ketosis and restore your glycogen levels a little bit, it may kick you out of ketosis for a short amount of time. But if you're fat adapted, your body's gonna bounce right back. Okay, let me give you a personal example. I've been in ketosis for a long period of time. Now, when I first went into ketosis, I stuck to it religiously for six months. I didn't vary at all. And I was really, really strict with the high amounts of fats and very structured with my protocol. Well, when I went out of ketosis for about two weeks, I found that I was back in ketosis way faster than I ever got into it before because my body had become fat adapted. But I also found that the muscle glycogen in my body stayed fuller longer, meaning I didn't deflate. I didn't have that flattened feeling where I felt weak. It worked better because my body was now more efficient at utilizing fats and storing the glycogen again. So now you probably wanna hear what I do. How often do I refeed? How often do I actually start adding carbs back in? Well, it looks something like this. When I start feeling like my joints are achy, when I start feeling like the pain is kicking in, when I start feeling like I'm getting totally stale, that's when I know it's time to have some carbs again. Is it every week? Nope. Is it every two weeks? Nope. Is it every three days? Nope. You wanna know the honest answer? I don't really know. I just know when my body starts to feel that way. And that's the main thing that I wanna drive home with you, is you are going to know when your glycogen levels are low. Okay, but don't think that they're gonna deplete magically after a few days as soon as you get into ketosis. It doesn't work like that. You don't go carbs and then spike up and then go into ketosis and those glycogen levels drain. They drain at their own rate of time and you will know. You will feel stale, you will feel weak, and you just won't feel good. So what should you eat when you refeed? You still wanna make sure you're refeeding with low glycemic carbohydrates. Here's why. Any cheat meal or refeed that you have is going to spike your insulin. Your body is very sensitive to insulin at this point in time. If you spike your insulin, you're going to shut off ketosis really fast and your body is more than likely going to store those carbohydrates as fat. You are very, very prone to storing body fat with a cheat meal, much more so than any other time. So eat low glycemic carbs, ones that don't spike your insulin, but still replenish your glycogen. That way you don't have insulin shutting off the process you have carbs that are gently replenishing your glycogen. I'm talking about things like beans, like lentils, like possibly brown rice, but honestly, even that is a little too high GI. Chickpeas, stuff like that. Don't make it a cheat meal. Make it a refeed meal that is strategically implemented. And I promise you, the glycogen levels will restore. You'll still have that glycogen. You're not the deflated skeleton that you think you are. And that, my friends, is how glycogen works in ketosis. Remember, it's all about the liver. It's not about what's stored in the muscles. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you have any questions regarding this topic, make sure you put them in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video.